Welcome back to Shifting Lanes. I've got the 2023 Range Rover Sport. This is now in its third generation. It's been redesigned inside and out. It looks sleek. It has new powertrains and whew, it is expensive. Let's go take a look. Starting with the outside, this model that I have is the SE Dynamic trim. And you could tell this is the Dynamic because of the front lip and also the rocker panels that look different than the base model. This is the same look that you'll find in the higher end trims as well. Starting with the headlights, this is the Pixel LED headlights with signature daytime running lights. This is a $600 option. So it has adaptive headlights and also the main beam can adjust vertically and horizontally so that when you're turning your steering wheel, this can also automatically adjust. These headlights also has four shadows to avoid blinding oncoming traffic, which is a nice upgrade. And for the rest of the front, this has the black exterior pack, which is $750. So it comes with a black script for the Range Rover logo. It has the black grille surrounds. And on top, you have the black gloss louvers and also on the side fenders here. These are non-functional, of course, but it adds to the look. So this front end design now looks very slippery. And that's a good thing because this has a 0.29 coefficient of drag. That's a 15% reduction from the previous generation. From the side, this has the 1075 style wheels. This is 23 inches, has very low profile tires, but still it gives a very smooth ride thanks to the air suspension. And stopping the Range Rover Sport is a 15 inch steel rotor gripped by the six piston caliper. And you can get these finished in different colors, but I like the gloss black. It gives it a more stealthy look. From the side, this has that unmistakable Range Rover look. This being the Range Rover Sport, so it looks a bit squashed from the rear end. These door handles, even though they're more mechanism than I would like, it has a very flush look, so this improves on the aerodynamics of the car as well. Looking at the back, this thing has a wraparound glass look. I love that. And if you look at the spoiler, it matches the lines of the car really well. But if you notice, there's a massive overhang from the rear glass. And I love how the windshield wiper is just tucked in there. So it gives it a more clean look. And back here, you also get more elements of the black package, just like the blacked out script, the very stealthy looking Range Rover branding. Moving to the inside, this has the ebony interior. So this has the the Windsor leather seats. There's actually leather in a lot of different surfaces on the armrest, on this movable armrest as well, on the dash, on the upper instrument panel. This car comes with the SV Bespoke Satin Forged Carbon Fiber Finisher. This is a really nice insert. This is a lightweight, very strong material. It's not really necessary for door cards, but it gives it a very unique look. You'll find the same forged carbon fiber finish for this lid for the cup holder, which can also slide out of the way, revealing even more storage. This specific car also comes with a cold climate pack. That's $450 and it comes with a heated windshield. And it's very tough to see in this image, but there are heating elements within the windshield itself. So that is electrically heated so you could defrost the glass much quicker. As for the buttons and the switch gear within the interior, they feel pretty high quality. The buttons on the steering wheel are still physical, but it's just a single panel. So it's at least it's not a touch sensitive button but I like the feedback on it. The paddle shifters behind the steering wheel has a really nice heft to it. And I like the size, it's not too big, it's not too small. You could see that it's there, but it's not obnoxious looking. It won't interfere with the stock usage. The buttons on the left-hand side, this is how you manipulate the digital driver display. Here you could pull up the menus, you could switch the different settings. Off to the side, you have some toggles for your seats, just like in the Mercedes-Benz. And here you could pull up your custom seat settings. Of course, there's the driver display and also this curved screen. I'll talk more about it in the technology section. But over here, the rest of the switch gear looks pretty nice. This in normal Jaguar Land Rover fashion, you have these multifunction dials that you could rotate and also push and pull. You could push this to pull up the heated seat controls and then you could also pull on it to change the fan speed. Same can be done on the passenger side. 
And there's no ventilated seats in this model, unfortunately, which is a big miss for a luxury car. And on the center here, you have some touch haptic feedback. This is the only touch haptic feedback controls on the car aside from the screen, which can do some interesting things. And the rest of it is very nice and simple. Here you have your start button, your volume dial, which I always appreciate. And this gear shifter, which feels really nice. It has a microfiber palm rest on it. It's nice to hold. What I don't like about this position is that it's so close to this multifunction dial that when I'm rotating this thing, I inadvertently would push forward or push back just because it's kind of in the way. Thankfully, there's a lockout button here that you can only switch gears when you have your foot on the brake and you also depress that button. And over to the side here, you have your drive mode control. This recesses and when you press it in, this goes into auto mode. But when you pull it up, here's how you could change between the different programs. So you have your dynamic mode, your eco mode, your comfort, grass, gravel, snow, mud ruts, sand, rock crawl, and also wade. So this changes how the adaptive suspension will behave, your ride height, and also your center differential and rear differential behaviors. And this being an all-wheel drive vehicle, there's also a two-speed transfer case. So you can engage low gear here if you want. Of course, you have to shift back into neutral, but think of this as your torque multiplier. So when you're off-roading and you really need a lot of torque, you put yourself into low gear and this thing will be much more capable. You're gonna sacrifice some speed, of course, because it is a two-speed transmission, but this is how you could really multiply the capability of this car. Some other neat features with the interior, you can pull up the screen and you can fold all of the seats. The rear seats will fold by itself. And since this is all powered, you could also unfold all, and this will just reset. Moving to the second row, you have some center vents and you also have heated seat controls for the outboard seats. There are two USB-C ports in the back and also this traditional plug. And at the back, you have the powered lift gate, of course, and lots of storage space back here. This is 29 and a half cubic feet. And I like this little divider that could fold up pretty easily. This divides the compartment into somewhat a third and two thirds so that if you have groceries, you could just stack it behind or in front of this little divider. And if you want to close it, you could just press on these buttons and then these will fold away. Since this has air suspension, you can also raise and lower the car with switches from the back. And here is to control your lights to help you hook up with your trailer. And if you need to lower the second row, you can just do so with the buttons back here. So with the second row down, you get 65.7 cubic feet of storage behind the first row. So from an interior perspective, I really like the design of the new Range Rover Sport. I think the materials are really nice as expected. There's some ambient lighting in there as well. And I like how everything has been designed so that it looks more streamlined and more modern looking and all good changes for the third generation Land Rover. Now let's move on to the technology. Starting with this 13.1 inch curved screen, it also has a floating look, like it's just floating right in front of this dash. And I really like how you can customize these screens. So let's customize the screen a little bit more. Let's show our compass, the wheel info, weight sensing, and let's take away this energy impact because I don't care about that so much right now. And also driving style and see how that looks. Here's your wheel info. You can see what's locked and what's not. And this is also your suspension settings. Here you have your inclinometer and your pitch and roll angles. For wading, you have a maximum two feet and six inches. You can go into wade mode and this will try to raise by five inches. And I could feel the car going up right now. More on this in the driving experience section, but this is how you would control some of these features. And you could always go back to auto driving mode just by pressing this button and this will go back to a normal ride height. 
I like how this system comes with built-in wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, and there's also Amazon Alexa built-in as well. Other nice features here, you have a 360-degree camera view. We have a 13.7-inch digital driver display, and there's also a heads-up display on the windshield. Really nice displays to help keep your eyes on the road. And here you could change the different displays as well. You could go from a this traditional two dial setup, you could have a map view, and you could also have a focused or a more streamlined design. And of course, this being a digital driver display, you could just display whatever pieces of information you want on the left panel, on the right info panel, so on and so forth. So lots of customization on this digital driver display. This car also has the intelligent ADAS or advanced driver assistance systems. So this has your adaptive cruise control with steering assist. And there's also a bunch of proc sensors to help you with parking. There's blind spot monitoring system and also rear cross traffic alert. So lots of safety features within this car. Some other nice technology features too. You have this rear view mirror and with the flip of a switch you could turn this into a camera view and this will help if you have lots of people in the back and here you could see an oncoming car right there so very helpful if you have lots of stuff within the second row so technology wise this has a really impressive set of features i love this 13.1 inch floating touchscreen it looks very modern i love the fact that it has wireless apple carplay wireless android auto amazon alexa and also a pretty modern voice assistant system and if you're a big tech lover i think you're going to be pretty satisfied with all of the features inside the car now let's talk about the power plant Inside this car, this is the P400. So this is going to have the three liter twin scroll turbo inline six with a mild hybrid system. It's a mild hybrid system because the hybrid is not strong enough to power the car by itself. It's really there to act as an integrated starter generator. So it works your auto start stop system pretty well. And it's also there to help harvest the energy and power the 48 volt electric supercharger. So it's really there to help improve the efficiency and not act like a traditional hybrid. This P400 is going to be making 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. This is called the P400 because it stands for 400 metric horsepower so that translates to about 395 horsepower the typical unit that we use in the United States there is a p360 version so that makes 360 metric horsepower or about 355 horsepower and the third power plant is the P530. So that's going to use the BMW 4.4 liter twin turbo V8. And that's good for 523 horsepower and 553 pound feet of torque. That one can do zero to 60 in 4.3 seconds with launch control. This P400, you can go from zero to 60 in about five and a half to six seconds. According to the spec sheet, you can expect 18 miles to the gallon in the city 26 miles to the gallon in the highway and about 21 miles per gallon combined. So this is still not a very fuel efficient car, but they've done some improvements to make this even more efficient with the mild hybrid system and also the more slippery exterior. As for the driving experience of the Range Rover Sport, this has a really buttery ride. This is riding on the new MLA Flex body architecture, which is a combination of hardware and also software controls to give this a very smooth and stable ride. This is also the first Land Rover vehicle to have switchable volume air springs. So that means that depending on your driving modes, your road surfaces, the adaptive system can recalibrate about 500 times every second. So this car can adapt to the road surfaces to focus on giving you the best ride quality. And since this has dynamic air suspension and adaptive dynamics, this rides very much like like it's on air but it still has the big suv driving manners still is very top heavy so you could feel the heft of it when you're driving this through the back roads the car itself can lower by 16 millimeters when this is going faster than 65 miles per hour again that's to give you the better aerodynamics and if you go into a different driving mode like when you're going into wade mode 
this car will actually increase the ride height by over five inches. That is a dramatic change. So it goes from a maximum two feet and six inches to a maximum two feet and 11 inches of weight depth. So let's take a look at how much higher this car is. So you can see that the gap here has increased by a significant degree. And even in this taller ride height, this now looks more like the traditional Range Rover instead of the Range Rover Sport. So now let's lower this vehicle. I like that you could pull up this vehicle dimensions page and this shows you the available ride height which is 11 inches and also the track width and vehicle dimensions like the height and the width. And here you also have the approach angle, the breakover angle and also the departure angle here at this 11 inch ground clearance. We could always change this to the lower like the access ground height and this will take some time to lower the car here visually. You could see that the car is trying to lower itself. And when it's done doing this, you could go back to the other screen and see that some of the angles have changed. So the height has reached this access height, so the car is a lot lower. And here, the approach angle is not even there anymore. Here you have the six inch ride height. It went down from 11 inches to six inches. And so let's take a look at what this looks like from the outside. And you can see here, it's a lot easier to step outside and all of that wheel gap has disappeared. The Range Rover Sport is an all-wheel drive vehicle and all-wheel drive is always engaged, but there is a disconnecting drive system for the front axle. So on dry roads or when you're parked right now, this will actually disconnect. This will give you better efficiency when you are just driving on a highway and it's nice and dry. This way you don't have the parasitic loss from the front axle. This is the drivetrain is just going to drive the rear axle and this rear drive shaft. But when you go into different modes or when you leave it in auto setting and the car senses that there's some wheel slippage and it needs the all wheel drive, this will automatically engage. So for the driving experience, the one word that really sums this up is smooth. This car is buttery smooth. There's not a lot of noise from the road or the wind that intrudes into the cabin. It is super quiet. I love how the chassis will kind of update and tune itself as you go down the road to give you the optimal comfort. And I just love the off-road capability of this thing. You could make it into a highway cruiser and you could also quickly change this to an off-roader. I love how you could get so much more clearance in this car. And of course, having all the technology available in this car, like this beautiful touchscreen, this digital driver display, and also the heads up display. You have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, and also all of the advanced driver assistance systems like your lane keeping, your adaptive cruise control, and your blind spot monitoring, and also rear cross traffic alert. It's going to make the ownership experience of this Range Rover Sport very complete and very convenient. Overall, I love the changes for the third generation Range Rover Sport. I think it looks sleek on the outside. It's much more streamlined and modern on the inside. And in general, Land Rover or Range Rover fashion, you have a lot of really nice materials within this car. I love the forged carbon fiber look. Some of the gloss black here, I prefer to have a different material, but it still looks pretty nice on this car. And there's just a lot of space, a lot of amenities. This is a great and fantastic car. So there you have it, folks. That's the 2023 Range Rover Sport. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you've learned something from this video, please consider hitting that like, subscribe, and that notification bell so that you can be notified the next time I make a new video. Let's wrap it up right there. My name is Hanson. You've been watching Shifting Lanes and also the 2023 Range Rover Sport. And I'll see you in the next one.